professor, we are group seven. And now we are talking about the failures in governments in Lehman Brothers company. We have three members, Jesse, Fei, and me. Here is the, our agenda. Firstly, I will give the background introduction, and then Fei and Jesse will talk about the analysis. Finally, I will give the recommendation. Firstly, is the background of the Lehman Brothers company. It was a global investment bank. It operated as a subsidiary of Lehman Brothers Holdings Company. The location of the bank was all over the world. The US, Europe, Latin America, the Middle East, and the region of Asia. the management structure of Lehman Brothers. Uh, they, had, they had 10 board members, nine of them were retired, and four were over 75 years old. One was a boss of a Bravo, one was a Navy officer, and one was a, an 83-year-old actor. Only one of those members had the financial um, knowledge, and uh, only one was a uh, a finance expert. And the chairman of the Lehman Brothers, uh, Richard Thug, was also the CEO. They had uh, five committees, including audit committee, financial and risk management committee, and, and other three committees. Uh, corporate governance can contribute a lot to the, if a, if a company can be successful or not. Uh, uh, when we talk about the failure of the Lehman Brothers, uh, we can, you know, research a lot of in the go corporate governance aspect. Uh, first, uh, the Lehman Brothers uh, had a command and a control CEO structure. The the chairman and the CEO of Lehman Brothers, the Richard Ford, as I said, had controlled and run the company for many years. He himself made the most of the decisions, like uh, which direction the company would go to and what strategy would the company would use to gain uh, working capital. And the rest of management were reluctant to challenge Ford's power or fearing to lose money and benefits. Uh, because like we talked about before, they were most of them were retired and uh, lack of associate uh, knowledges. And they failed to, that's the reason that, that they failed to identify and uh, made adjustments 
to the chat. There were two big weaknesses in Lehman Brothers' governance. The first one is the uh, remuneration. Uh, uh, that's the compensation plan. It's including the bonus and the incentives that uh, fail to manage risk. Uh, we have some data here. The Lehman Brothers composition ha has always been a hidden problem. The, bo uh, the board approved the CEO and other top managers way too much of salary. According to the data from the Times, the total remuneration was uh, $700,000 in 2007 and uh, $3.54 uh, billion in five years before 2008. And the senior directors in Lehman in the past of six years before 2008 had made a total uh, 6,000 million salary, dollar salary on average. According to the report of the One Institute, from 1993 to 2007, the senior directors had gained uh, $4.66 billion in total, including uh, basic payments, uh, dividends, and uh, long-term equity incentive, stock value of the exercise of options. And the one thing that we may notice is that the 87% of this, the, their income are from the stock value. Uh, what makes problem here is that because the top management salary is very high and uh, the Lehman Brothers also plan a lot of individual incentive uh, plans for the employees. And those, empo those plans and uh, policies uh, made, the, made the whole workers in the company mainly focus on the short-term income of the company rather than the long-term income because how much you earn depends heavily on how much business you do in that month or week. Uh, that makes the company uh, go a very dangerous path because they, because they want to pursue the, the short-term uh, maximum, maximum income. Then they will do some uh, arbitrary, arbitrary behaviors uh, while breaking the ethical boundaries. And the one come with high level uh, income with the gradually growing high risk, a high risk asset allocation in company's business, which finally led the, the collapse of the structure of the business. And another weakness we want to talk about is the risk management. Uh, as the the top manager of Lehman Brothers said they did have the, they did run the risk management. Um, it said they said they had a culture of risk management at every level of the firm. But one question had been raised by an investor: if there was a culture of risk at every level of the management, how come you al uh, you allowed the leverage ratio uh, to rise from? 26.2 to 1 in the bull market of 20, uh, 2006 to 30.7 uh, to 1 in the turbulent market of November 2007. So what was weird is was that there weren't any losses in the uh, equity of the shareholders. Uh, on the contrary, there was increase in the in their uh, stock stockholders' equity. But it was true that the Lehman Brothers ran risk management, but it management heavily depended on the value and risk system um, introduced by uh, one corporation named the JPM. Uh, one problem with this uh, uh, VAR system was that uh, the VAR mm, system won't tell you what would happen at the other uh, one percent of the chance that the company may lose money. 
because there was a 99% uh, confidence limit uh, on the, the VAR, uh, VAR system. And uh, another 1% was the chance you may lose money. Uh, but most of the managers think that 1% doesn't matter, but actually um, the VRR was based, based on a lot of uh, mathematical assumptions. Some of those assumptions were proven wrong in the real life. So uh, in real life, the, that 1% actually matters a lot. Uh, another problem is that VRR approach is that it, it uh, heavily uh, rely on the assessment of the val val validity that being a concern to security because we do we do not know how much that the security bounces around. Uh, what makes a, a problem is that the validity is quite low in a peaceful peaceful market, but it's very high uh, in the turbulent market. So the assessment of this validity may be have a much high differences in different markets. Um, so the negative effect would be ampli amplified uh, multiple times when the market was turbulent and uh, you had uh, the wrong assessment of the validity. The flaws in the, uh, the, flaws in the VAR system approach is, not, is one reason that made uh, Lehman Brothers uh, go, go into the failure. But there are other reasons, like not applying other uh, risk management risk approaches was another problem that, that the Lehman Brothers didn't think of. So next uh, we have Gacy to analysis the counting issue for us. Okay, I will introduce uh, the counting problem. The major accounting problem for Lehman Brothers is to name the record 100 on the spot. The misleading transactions that Lehman Brothers has made were called record 105. It means that the company could remove a lot of liabilities out of the accounting report. To be more specific, a reported agreement which named the record involves a temporary transfer of assets, often fixed income or equity securities, to a counterparty for cash accompanied by a simultaneous agreement to repay to repurchase the same or equivalent assets at a specific price at a later date. After the later date, uh, often may be as short as just one week or ten days, the transfer returns the securities to the borrower who repays the loan with interest in cash. As part of the exchange, one party receives securities as collateral for the cash loan, while the other receives cash collateral for the securities loan. Then I will introduce repo operations. Repo, sale and reposition operations transform a financing transaction into an asset disposal. Um, it was used for money making by lending, circulating, and investing it. Usually financial institutions borrow banks using securities as collateral. Here I will share an example to illustrate it. Um, we can imagine that financial institution has securities for $102. It will borrow $100 from another institution presenting the securities as a guarantee for the short-term loan. The difference, which is just $2, is a higher cut, price for the liquidity and the risk of the bond. In these operations, collateral stays on the borrower's books, cash increase the bank's balance sheet, and the liability arises from the borrower amount. At the maturity of the record, the borrower gets the securities back if he returns the cash plus interest. Then I will introduce Lemon Brothers and the Repo 105. Overall, Lemon Brothers used the repo operations purport 
market place for financing reasons, that will be reported to them and at their disposal in the financial statements. They remove the declarations in entry from the balance sheet for debt for seven to ten days and the made misleading appearance of the company's overall situation in 2007 and 2008. To be more specific, Sample Brothers accounted for less than 105 transactions and sales by which they removed the inventory from the balance sheet. The number of the less than 105 transactions regularly reached the before the closure of the reporting period. Lambo Brothers borrowed millions of dollars and they used them to pay other liabilities. Few days later, they repaid the cash borrowing at interest, repurchased the securities and restored assets on its financial statement. Similarly, I argue that why the uh, auditing company didn't find the problem, here I will illustrate this point. First, during the cost process, the company's officer stated firstly that Ernst Young didn't approve the accounting policy. It rather became comfortable with the policy for purposes of auditing financial statements. Secondly, the they stipulate that they obey the principles laid down by American financial accounting standards for, and one of the rules named the FAS 140 allow to certify the REPO 105 the way it did. In spite of these statements, the grammar concluded that there is a small practice conducted by Ernst Young as Lemon Brothers auditor.
have very appreciated and see you in square 